Hey everyone, Isaias was uh, just, we were talking through some of our current projects that we're doing, and uh, this was a really interesting thing that I, I wasn't aware of either. So he's going to show us here um, a little thing to make sure you pay attention to, if you, right. especially if you're dealing with any state of any sort of size. Right. If it, this really, there's two things that come into play here. If you're dealing with files, like you're reading a file and putting it into a, a variable, and you're passing that variable into a function. That's where it, this little issue is going to come up. So check this out, my name. So I have this right here. And now I have a function called add last name, whatever it is. And here you're going to pass my name. Here's the problem. The function takes a string. Notice that this variable is called string, but this one is called my name, right? Inside here, I'm going to add my last name to it. Cool. What just happened, and you don't notice this, is that this variable, which has only my name, I gave it to the function, but the function made a copy of it so the variable string and the variable my name both have the same thing it is a copy in very small data sets like this that is not a problem but what if this was my file and this was a file you read file read whatever file and what happens is that that file is two gigabytes of data. So now you read two gigabytes of data into a variable. When you pass it to your function, now your function is going to create a copy of it. Now you are now you're making two variables of two gigabytes of data. Does that make sense? And that is usually not a problem in AutoHotKey because we don't deal with those type of things very often. But if you're dealing with data, and especially if you don't know how much data you're going to get, what we do in V2 is that we use a by ref reference here, which now means I'm not making a copy of the variable. Whenever I put the word string here, I'm referring to the original variable. So I only have the data once in memory and i'm referring to the data to the same location in memory that's what i'm doing that's the reason why that function had that i wouldn't recommend taking it off in this instance because the data that we're getting from the website varies a lot and we don't know you just showed me an example of four megabytes you don't know if you're going to get a 100 megabyte file or and you're going to be looping through a lot of data so the best we can do is not make a copy of the variable because we don't know the size. That's all there is to it. I got to um, think to some degree, there's also performance hits as well. It right? is a performance hit, right? Because, yeah. and for B1, it would be the by ref like this by ref. Um, that's what you would do in V1. So there is a performance hit because now you have to copy one place in memory into another place in memory and that would take time and depending on the size of the file yeah of course that would take time um not not to mention again if you're working with bigger stuff just possibly slowing down your system because you're eating up the ram as you do this that's the other thing so if you don't do that and you have a copy of course by default when the function ends that variable is released it gets released yeah. but for whatever reason, if you have a, a static mm -hmm. thing or whatever it is, you might create a memory leak just because you're copying data for whatever other reason. So, and help me under, make sure when I think of memory leaks, I think of stuff that that it's problematic. But it, it's usually if I close the program, I would still have the memory leak. But in this case, correct me if I'm wrong. Like if you exit that program, it's going to free up the memory, right? Not necessarily. Yes, wow. our hotkey. So, so yeah, of course, our hotkey has this memory management that if you exit the script, your variables get 
released. Yeah. There are situations, though, in which that doesn't happen. Uh, so let's go ahead and on on exit. There are situations in um, in which the delete meta function, this guy, it tells you if an exception or runtime error is thrown, not not everything is released. And it also, if the script is directly terminated by any means, including the exit app or any functions who have yet to return, they do not get a chance to do so. Therefore, any object references by local variables are not released. So that means at least this part where it says the delete here, usually when you exit the script, the deletes might get called automatically and so on there are certain situations in which sure. some things are not released. So you have to be really careful with memory. Um, if a script hangs, if the script creates an exception or something that is stopped abruptly and it didn't get the chance of releasing those things, you might get that. So if you have a four gigabyte variable, right? And the script stopped, now those four gigabytes are taken on your system and not released. So it is something, now the OS has some ways of kind of like noticing those kind of things. They call zombie processes and they do have ways of trying to manage that. But of course, you might want to avoid that. That's and also just that. because when you, it, then I come back later and I start it up again. The new version doesn't know where the old version was storing the thing, right? Exactly. So it'll yeah, just right. add to it. Yeah, okay. Right, exactly. And what about the DLL calls? If you are DLL, uh, using the DLL calls, if the script uh, like on exit, does they empty <laughs> the variable? Yep, like very careful with DLL calls. For example, yes. If you create um buffer like thing, a location. No, let, let me no. Let me show you. This is why DLL calls are so complicated, yes. especially if you're dealing with something that is written in C plus plus. This is something that you will not see very often. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Right. This is a DLL call that I'm making right here. And on that DLL call, I have to pass the address of an object that I created above. So I created an object and I have to pass that address. Because I'm passing that address, I have to keep track of another reference to that object, call the DLL call, and then release that address. You manually have to keep track of the objects because the DLL call is not going to do it for you and auto hotkey is not going to do it for you either. So in, in certain situations, your the memory that you are taking up might not get released automatically. And you have to know when those type of things are. In this case, yeah, that DLL call does not manage that. So you have to do it yourself. And the documentation tells you about it. And then this is the way how you do it in AutoHotKey. And it I, is tricky, oh, is very annoying. Well, it's annoying, but correct me if I'm wrong. It's also quote unquote a feature because what if you wanted to still use that thing right like it's, you it's just whenever you it. want not whenever the program tells you right exactly yeah, so right, right. c plus plus is one of those languages that you have to manage the memory yourself oh. um, um and yeah. mostly and um that means that then you have full control of when you release the stuff and when you don't but that's a responsibility too well i was gonna say to to sum it up with it's funny you said that was with great power comes great <laughs> responsibility Right, That's like, right. <laughs> doing stuff. The more work is required of you. Auto hockey does a lot of the stuff on its own, and we beat up Windows a lot for you know not running this and that. Hey, not everyone knows what they're doing or takes the time to do to do the stuff. So honestly, like rebooting every couple of days, not not a bad idea. Um, just but just as a cool thing, about two weeks ago, Tigby, the guy that makes the Lexer for V2, he submitted a fix to auto hotkey, so for the executable, fixing a memory leak created by an object reference. That's what we call about a memory leak is when the program grabs a little bit of memory, but yep. never releases it. And over time that adds up and makes the program slower, slower, slower. We don't really notice it because we don't deal with that much. We, we don't 
charge the program the computer that much but for some people <laughs> that that is a problem and right now Irfan, you are dealing with unknown data and that's the reason why i wouldn't suggest it is that i don't know if when when i get the data from that website that they're going to send me 500 megabytes of data i don't know as i don't know then it's safer to just leave it as it was and work with the copy of uh with the original data not a copy of it that's why all right well i hope you guys enjoyed that um this is now, this was an advanced topic, although it, it's something we all should be aware of, but it's something we would probably, we'll probably bring up on the Hero Call this week to talk yeah. with Hero members, because that's a phenomenal uh, little deep dive into doing this kind of stuff and what we should be aware of. So uh, please like the video if you learned something, considering uh, our, I'd say if you're doing that level of stuff, our objects, function objects and classes course is Definitely. a great one for you. If you haven't checked it out, um, I'll put a link up here, but thank you all for watching. Cheers.